Continuing on the streak of answering questions about performance-related aspects of inference for LLMs, today we're going to be approaching the single-threaded question, which I think this actually has potentially some of the biggest payback if it is correct. So the question goes a little something like this. Does the single-threaded speed of your processor impact your inference? And we're going to prove this out today. So on the right hand side here, we've got a very great Epic system and we use this, of course, this is the quad build that I put together. You can find more information about that in this video and also be sure to check the history on this channel. And if you're new to this channel, you might want to hit like and subscribe if this is the kind of content you're into. Now, this is featuring the 7702 AMD Epic. This is a ROM generation chip and it does not have a super high single thread speed. Now, we're going to compare that today with something that has actually a really good single thread speed. So I pulled this out recently when I redid the storage configuration. So if you saw me in that video, which you can check here, it has a good amount of information about the new system that I'm putting together and it's replacing the old system. The old system here is powered by a WRX80 motherboard and a 5955WX Threadripper Pro. This has a really good single core thread speed, well into the four gigahertz range. And since it actually maintains the same format and has the same exact cooler on it, that the uh, AMD SP3 socket has on our AMD Epic system, I can just basically pop out the motherboard, put it in, the CPU cooler, everything else will just be fine. So let's get this taken apart and swapped into here to test this out. So let's get this motherboard removed. And there we go. And now let's go ahead and get this removed and swapped out. And we've got our frame ready for the new motherboard. So we now have the frame with the new motherboard that we're going to be testing out in place. Drop your wagers in the comments below now. I look forward to reading those. So we're about to test out the 3090 and the 4090. First, I'm going to be testing out the 3090. So I've been really pleased with these risers and they have not dropped any lanes or anything like that. They are very heavy duty and they are very long also. I would really recommend that you consider them. You can find which specific ones I use in the links below. There we go. All right. And we'll get the NIC and the, get in there, NVMEs. All right, let's power it up and get it turned on. Right, so we have this now booted up and it's running on the 5955. This is an older generation Threadripper Pro. It does actually go up to about 4.5 gigahertz. The RAM is exactly the same. It is the 2400 speed RAM that I took out of the Epic and I put it in here. It does work, does negotiate at 2400 and also it is eight channels. So this really isolates just the CPU instead of the underlying memory subsystem as well. So let's go ahead, go to our workspace, and we're going to start off with the Quinn 2.5 32B. And this one, let me make sure that I've got the right one here. Yes, this is the 18.5 gigabyte one. So we're going to issue a warm up command really quick. If you look at the top up here, hopefully you can see, uh, this is going to be hard to see on mobile, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to see, possibly, the speed of the single threads that are the fastest. And definitely, I think this is interesting. We are seeing faster speeds. Now, this is on the 3090, single 3090, and we're seeing 34.97 tokens per second. That is an improvement of, gosh, roughly about five uh, tokens per second, maybe four tokens per second, but that's not nothing. And so you might want to factor that in if you're looking at upgrades for a system 
what might be more valuable. Granted, I don't think everybody's going to be like epics and thread rippers, but if you have a really slow, so the 7702, we'll check out the specs for that. And then we'll check out the specs for the 5955 WX and we'll be able to see those two differences. And I think that might help uh, kind of make a difference in what people are seeing because maybe you have a really slow a uh, single thread core speed CPU, and you could update that for a cost-effective means and get possibly a fairly meaningful improvement. So 34.09 tokens per second here on this. And next we're going to have the story time. I'm excited also. Somebody told me that there's a ability to make your 24 gigabyte 3090 into a 48 gigabyte. I don't know how you do that, but if you do know how to do that, uh, let me know in the comments below for sure. That's a exciting possibility. You can see thread eight there just sticking at 4.5 for a pretty good period of time. And the total number of tokens per second was 31.94 tokens per second. That was one minute and 26 seconds of generation. So that actually, uh, that that's pretty good. That's really pretty good. We're going to test the other models also just to see if there's a bigger difference in certain models. I don't think that there should be, but... That's just a guess at this point, and the best thing to do is to test those guesses out. So we'll get our final question in here. And that one came in at 32.42 tokens per second. All right, the next model that we're going to use is the Llama 3.18 BFP16, this one here. And we're going to go ahead and... You know, I'm going to dump the other one out of RAM because I feel like this one might fit in there at the same time. Let's see. No, it's 15 gigabytes. It'll definitely push it out. Warm up. Yep, it pushed it out. And we hit 48.89 tokens per second. Now, on the 4090, we had hit 51.45, so that's a bit of a difference. That's kind of divergent. We'll take a look at the differences on the chart here at the end of this also. Program with fractals generated here. And we hit 47.65 tokens per second on that. 4,000 word story. Yeah, and it looks like 4.5 is what we're hitting. And definitely you see it hopping around. And so on this one, we got 46.48 tokens per second. And that one came in at 47.03. So we were about two tokens slower than the 4090 on this is what I'm seeing just kind of right off the bat. And now we'll try the Llama 3.2 3B Instruct FP16. All right, and let's hit warm up. And we hit 100 tokens per second there. So we actually beat what we hit on the uh, 4090. So when we test the 4090, we might see some really good performance improvements here. I, I'm beginning to think that that might be a likely outcome. That'd be cool. Ninety-nine point five seven tokens per second. Story about a cat themed in four thousand words, and that's ninety-two point eight six tokens per second on that one that we hit. And then we'll just wrap it up with this really short one, and that was ninety-one point three two tokens per second. So we have some pretty interesting information from this. I'm going to go ahead and toss in the 4090. We'll check that one out. Then we're going to jump into the chart, kind of put it in there in the context of which CPU was able to score which. And that way we can have a quantitative value for what that difference looks like in this specific scenario. And I look forward to reading about your scenarios and your setups and your rigs and stuff like that in the comments below. Okay, now we have the 4090 over here loaded in. Let's go back to our workspace and we're going to start up a Quinn 2.5. And uh, I'm not sure if it's going to understand what WAM RUP is, but we'll find out. We've got one CPU thread at uh, 4.55 here. And our tokens per second on that are 39.09. So 
We also were at 34.68. So we actually are seeing an improvement here also that looks like about another four and a half uh, currently. So let's see if that holds throughout the rest of the testing. So definitely a faster single thread speed does have an impact. Now it's interesting, the impact between a 3090 and a 4090 was a, roughly the same as what we're seeing here. So pretty cool, uh, good, good piece of information to have. And 39.02 tokens per second, we were at 35.95 on the 4090 before. All right, we've got our 4,000 word story here. I swear to God, if this ends up taking another 8,000 or 10,000 words to get it out, you're going to end up changing this prompt. And we're only using 347 watts out of 500 total possible. The fans are just chilling at 30%. Temperature, 51C. 2.7 uh, gigahertz on the GPU side, and the MIM is running at 10.25. Ooh, that's fast. That is fast. It did finally finish at 37.32 tokens per second. So again, we have that incremental improvement. And for our final one on the Quinn 2.5, 32B, 37.92 tokens per second. So pretty good. Llama 3.1, 8B instruct FP16. And we hit 55.6 tokens per second. And that was on the other CPU, 51.45. So let's go ahead and generate the fractals program and yeah definitely seeing about a four to five per tokens per second increase it looks like so the th I'll, I'll talk about ramifications when we get to the end of this there's cheaper ways to go about this than necessarily going with a threadripper pro threadripper pro is not cost uh economical um mm, 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 five four seven two yeah, so 50.82 was what we got last time. And 53.16 tokens per second versus 49.53 before. And our final question. And that came out at 53.32. And that's in comparison to 49.93 prior. This is, this is impressive. This is, a, this is a good piece of information. And this is why you test things out. And you can send a SIG quit to the Olama thread and exit it nicely. So let's go back over here and run a warm up now. And it's interesting how host memory and GPU memory kind of, it doesn't real time show the GPU memory pressure building, but you would kind of almost expect that to be in the RX or TX represented, but you don't see that at all. So it just kind of poof, uh, transfers from system memory all the way over finally. And I guess at the end of that, it updates you as to what that is. So let me get it to write a program that generates fractals for us. So that's a very poor job it, it, that it just did for us there. 112 tokens per second though. And uh, that was compared to 97.78. So, okay. These are, these are some big differences. 113.79 on the warm up. So the 3B really accelerating here. Really, really accelerating quite a bit. It seems like it's decided that formatting... Doesn't matter. And that is definitely not a 4,000 word uh, anything. So yeah, this this is actually acting really, really bizarrely bad here. That was 111 tokens per second though. So we'll just take the data point. It behaving really badly though is something that you might uh, be concerned about if you're intending on using and keeping this. And we're at 110 tokens per second here. So actually on the Llama 3.2, uh, instruct FP16. So, I mean, it is a 3B model, definitely a lot of speed up here. So that is, uh, 
almost a 15, that is a 15 token per second gain on the 3.2 3B. So we're going to start with reviewing the Quinn 2.5 32B Q4. And we can see that the delta between the 3090s and the CPU was not that pronounced. It was 1.5, essentially, the difference between them, which uh, that's not a huge uh, tokens per second difference. On the 4090s, it was a little bit more. It was three tokens per second delta on average. I would say also that keep an eye on the question three kind of longer running one here. Uh, those definitely are going to see uh, a bigger delta, it looks like to me, versus what we're seeing on some of the shorter questions. So there may be uh, some interesting things about that in particular. Next, let's jump up to the Llama 3.1 B8FP16. And here we can see that the delta is a little bit larger. So the 3090s delta on the Epic 7702 versus the 5955WX was 2.5 tokens per second. Not tremendous. And on the 4090, the delta tokens per second difference was 3.8 tokens per second difference. So a bit of a difference there. What I saw that really was pretty, pretty awesome, when you looked at the Llama 3.2 3B FP16, this difference is quite pronounced. So I'm going to guess this might play out this way. Also, if you have, say, a smaller like 7B or 8B model, you might want to factor this in also. Um, but that is a nine tokens per second delta TPS difference. And I mean, we're talking really fast speeds here, uh, approaching 100 or over 100 on the 4090. It did end up going well over 100 into the 110, 113 range. So 16.1 tokens per second faster on that model. So there are some takeaways there. And I think one of the bigger ones is if you are looking at your CPU, that could have just about as big an impact as going from a 3090 to a 4090. Still, I think the most economical route that I've laid out is a pretty darn economical route. And it can scale out to do all sorts of tasks and a tremendous amount of them. So looking at Zen 2 class chips that you might be interested in that uh, are, are actually still pretty economical, the uh, 3.9 max out speed that you can hit on the 7F52, which is currently the cheapest priced 16 core variant, is right around the you know 300-ish range. That's pretty good. To be honest with you, that's uh, substantially better than what you would get if you're looking at a 5955WX. 5955WX is, uh, yeah, it's going to go faster, 4.5 gigahertz. You're going to pay quite a bit more for it for a unlocked one, which you got to have pretty much an unlocked one if you're going to buy a third-party motherboard, unless you're buying a workstation that's direct from Dell or Lenovo or somebody like that. So you're looking at $879.95 right now for one of those. So definitely not on the value proposition side for a 59.55, just 16 core 32 thread uh, machine. So again, this only matters if PCIe lanes matter to you. If you are not interested in PCIe lanes, uh, just going to reiterate it yet one more time. You can use cheaper risers that are able to you know, use a 4X or a 1X and you don't have to have the full PCIe bandwidth for you to get really good inference speed. It's when you're doing RAG, maybe some training, that's when you're really going to need those full 16 lanes. So aside from loading, you might see a little bit of difference there, but not that much. So I hope this has been entertaining to you. I certainly know that I wasn't expecting to see that big of a jump. And so I think we got some pretty interesting results there. I know that uh, for me, I don't know if it, it made that big of a deal, three tokens per second, five tokens per second, doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Uh, but if you're looking at a 3090 to a 4090, certainly on the smaller models, uh, you could see some really, really good speed ups between those two. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, if you're using something like a 7B or an 8B model, I feel like this is very applicable to you because you may see a tremendous speed up uh, just by having a faster single thread. So let me know what you are finding out in the comments below. I look forward to reading that. Also, make sure to check out some of the channel history. And if you're new to the channel, hit like and subscribe, ring that bell down below, and that way you will get notified when new videos drop. Everybody have a great one. I will check you out next time.